Hey there, welcome back. This is module four and we're going to talk about permission. Now, as I mentioned, this one is probably my favorite, maybe because I've been uh, really just finishing internalizing this part of my journey for myself, but I think it's also because one of my core themes for my life is growth and with permission, that is when you start to grow, when you understand that you can give yourself permission to pursue everything that you've been holding yourself back from. Okay, so real quick, I wanna review how this ties in. We talked about your mission in module one and having a compelling reason and a why that's gonna drive you and how like that's just part of a foundation. And then in module two, we talked about the enemy and that thing that you're fighting against emotionally and how those two together just really make this powerful combination of you knowing why you do what you do because, and that's important because that resonates with other people and brings the right people to you. And then you're not a commodity. People are passionate about following you because they love what you're about and who you are and what you do, not just what you do, but why you do it. And then with fighting against having an enemy is just that those two just come together in this amazing way. Okay, so with module three and four, we have a similar kind of idea where with module three, we talked about belief and just believing for you to just believe that this is possible, that it's possible, whatever it is that you want to do as you're starting to dream, you're starting to find your voice and grow your business and take your skill set. Like you've spent years getting really, really good at what you do, but it's still hard to believe that you can take that and do what you want to with it that you can create your own business, that you can create your own brand, that you can have more control over your life and who you become and your lifestyle and the way that your family, you know, what's possible for your family. Like it's, it's a step. And so we talked about that in module three about believing that this whole thing that you want to do, this thing that's starting to awaken in you, this business idea that you've got that you're developing, that to believe that it's possible and to just cultivate faith and hope and how those two connect together, right? So with permission, you need both. You need to believe that it's possible. And then when you believe that it's possible, that's this like incredible step. But then you have to give yourself permission to act on your belief. Okay, so that's how these go together. you got to believe it's possible, but you've got to give yourself permission to do that because if you believe that it's possible but you still have mental hang-ups about not feeling worthy or not deserving it or that you can't because there's some part of your vision that you feel apologetic about how others will see that um you know fail of success is just as real as fail of failure uh, <laughs> fear of success is just as real as fear of failure and so that all comes back to permission and identifying what it's going to take for you to let yourself grow, let yourself change. There is part of you that is invested in who you currently are as a person and giving yourself permission to change threatens that part of your identity and it's a process to walk that out and you will have, as you grow and you learn and you expand in everything that you're doing, there is part of your brain that will freak out and you have to tell it that it's okay and that these scary things is not a lion or a tiger trying to eat you and that everything's going to be okay. And that just, you know, feeling threatened by change is natural survival instinct and but that it's okay. And you're, you know, you're balancing practicality with the dreaming and that like that's not this is usually not about that. that is, this is just about that inside part of your brain that's threatened by your identity changing. And then another part of that, a huge part of that besides yourself and how you view yourself and that changing is how you perceive that others view you and how others interact with you is going to change as you give yourself permission. So I want to share a story uh, just a little bit from my journey about how I finally gave myself permission. I um, I was at this place where the pain of staying the same finally became greater than the pain of change and I decided to make a shift and I got 
just enough things in place to where I could quit my job and start my own business and pursue this idea that's been on my heart for just years. But the very last thing that unlocked this for me, I shared about this a little bit before, um, part of it was believing. I shared in the believing part about how I had to, you know, see, visualize myself where I wanted to be, imagine that future self and that future lifestyle and that future, how I wanted to be able to provide for my family and change my family's life. I had to visualize that, you know, future and then believe that it was possible and then be grateful that it was possible, right? So I did that that summer and a huge part of that, I don't know if I already shared this, but the big leap, if this resonates with you, if you are, uh, if you do some of the journaling exercises that I give you in a second and you still feel like you need more, go and read The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. It's amazing. Uh, I read that book when I was starting to, so I, the first step is I was starting to believe. I, I, spent, I spent the last year and a half you know, I knew marketing and advertising from uh, a corporate standpoint, like I knew a ton, but I'd always been an employee and I'd never even didn't really know anybody very well who was a small business owner or who was really vocal about it and embraced it. And like, you know, so I felt like I didn't know anybody and that was always intimidating. I felt like I didn't know how to be a business owner. I just didn't know how to do that. That wasn't something that I did, right? My identity was, I don't know how to do that. And so then I was learned all about it, and then started to believe that it was possible. And then the last, you know, unlocking for me before I finally, like, let the pieces fall into place and made the step to quit my job, the last thing for me was that I read that book and it talked about, it, he, he lays out, like, four different reasons that are the reasons that we, um, okay, real quick, I'm going to give you his, like, first main idea in a nutshell which is that we each have an upper limit of happiness and we only let ourselves be so happy. And we're just, it's like a set point that our brain is just used to that. And so you need to do journaling and mental exercises and the emotional wrestling with, you know, taking the time to journal to figure out what your issues are and to deal with them and to take practical steps to increase your faith, to increase your hope to get passionate about helping people, passionate about fighting, fighting whatever your enemy is, right? You need to do all of that mental and emotional work. And as you do that, you need to have that mindset that you're also tackling that enemy of your own acceptance that your identity is that you can only be so happy. You have to cultivate all of these things, cultivate this journey and tell yourself that you're going to give yourself permission now to be happy. Um, back to, to finish my story, he gives four, four different reasons that we, um, you know, that we have to get past. And everybody's got one and maybe some people have a few. And mine was, um, he, said, he said this one was common of gifted students, which I was when I was growing up. I was in the gifted and talented program and as a kid. And I was a straight A student and I was the teacher's pet and I always... Um, and I was the first firstborn. And so I got that message growing up. I always felt like I had to, I couldn't shine. I had to like hold myself back. Don't outshine them. Don't make them feel bad. Don't do too much. Okay. This totally, I totally forgot about this. We to, like not very many classes had this, but do you ever have, did you ever have a class where there was like, they graded on a curve? And so somebody you know, whatever the highest, if like nobody got a hundred and the highest was a 91, then they would grade on a curve. Well, I would be, you know, so potentially if you were, you know, knew the material really well and you got a hundred, then you ruined the opportunity for everybody else to get a B instead of a C because it was so hard that nobody got an A and so they graded on a curve. And so I would be the one that would like break that for people. So that's like a really good concrete example of like that idea, the way I felt growing up. And I just, for years, I kind of, for me, I, there's some part of me that kind of settled down when I had kids and then like pop back, popped back up because having kids is such a like foundational, emotional, intense, challenging experience that with having kids, I felt like I knew I was doing what I was supposed to be doing and life was a sufficient challenge that I wasn't bored. But 
you know, I had years of college and grad school where, especially in college, I get high school, I don't know, there are always those certain amazing teachers. But I would do my first draft, send it in, get an A, and I was always just like, don't, don't you want me to do better? And people are always like, oh, no, it's good enough. It, it's good enough, whatever. So I've had to give myself permission to shine. I read that book at the, so back to my story again, at the end of the, the end of that summer, I did all the research. I started to learn about the world that was out there, all the tools you hear me talk about, all the, you know, small business, um, those kind of tools, part of it. Like I already knew the advertising, but all the small business marketing stuff. I spent the last year and a half learning that before the summer. And then this summer I had that moment where I read this book and I read the part of his things where like he was talking about me and I was like, oh my gosh, this is all, I just had this realization that the only thing that stood between me and this entire future that I now believe to be possible and that I passionately wanted to make happen was me giving myself permission to move on from holding myself back. And so I got in the shower and I cried and I said to myself, it's time to shine. And I cried. And if you are somebody who knows me from before and after and you want to do a similar kind of journey, well, permission, that was an unlock. You've got to believe that all of this is possible. But then, and I think I talked in one of the videos about how you have to believe, but you can't just like say the words and say, I'm going to become somebody who does this amazing thing I want to do. You have to believe it and wrap your emotions in the fact that you believe that it's possible. And you're not just like, it's not mental, it's emotional and you can tie faith into it. And that's when the magic starts to happen. But I want to add, I feel like especially for women, this is especially important. You believe it, but as women, we have to give ourselves permission and I'm so passionate about this. I'm going to do some bonus videos. They'll be below trying to figure out how not to turn the rest of this into an entire soapbox because I'm really passionate about women and you, how amazing you are, everything that you've accomplished and how much you feel apologetic for the things that you want to do that will take you to the next level. Like when you think about doing things to feel beautiful or happy or fulfilled or amazing, or <laughs> just the things that get you lit up, you feel like we feel apologetic about spending time on those activities. And I want to help you dial into that and change that message to yourself. And all right, I'm going to give you some journaling, <laughs> like looking past the camera at my notes on the wall. Um, some journaling exercises. Okay, I want you to find some time and write down uh, several things. Just start to write down, you know, sketch out part of the picture of where you want to be. Um, pull out your notes about your big dreams and think about live and your your list of values and think about living your values and your dreams and your goals. Just pull out your business plan. And let yourself, like, try to find some time to do this when it's quiet and you can relax and you start by, like, meditating for a few minutes or praying, like, taking a deep, taking a deep breath and just letting all of everybody else's voices go away and all the things that you feel like you should want to do. And I want you to sit down. I want you to kind of clarify and kind of condense into something, you know, a picture the, of your future that you want to work toward that really resonates with you and who you are. But if you're married, if you've got kids, if you've got, you know, the values of like balancing with business and family, like I want, I want your vision to align with your values. And so, you know, I say like, take away all the people telling you you shouldn't, whatever, but I'm not talking about rebelling and growing, going rogue. This is very much about holistically finding alignment where whatever pieces and commitments that you've already made that are serious, like marriage or kids, or, you know, if you've got people that are counting you in a certain way, like people are the biggest thing in life. Like that really matters. If you used to have a dream of traveling around the world and doing something crazy and never being at home, but then you had a kid, like you should change that. Like God gave you that child or like with your spouse, like how can you, I want to challenge you to think creatively about looking at who you are, 
And if you've been, if that's been dormant, if you've been kind of pushing that down, who you are, what you know, what you really want to do, but think about how that aligns with the the people that are in your life. And I want to challenge you if you feel like, oh, I've spent time doing this, but now I want to do that and they don't work. Like you don't have to walk away from your current life. This is all about envisioning a future creatively that can fit with that. So it's a little bit of <laughs> like, do this, but also do this. Find a place in the middle. Um, listen to your heart. Listen to your intuition. Find some time to write down your 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 dreams, your goals. You know, one, two, three, five, ten years, whichever of those helps for you to think about. Um, there might be milestones, you know, as far as how old kids or how old you'll be or different things. But you know, write that down and then. As you're doing that, I want you to let yourself feel. So if you start to cry, I want you to like let yourself feel, let yourself have the emotion. Um, As I said before, don't let yourself get into guilt or regret too much. Don't don't get into that. And try not to get into confidence and pride. I don't know. I hate to tell women about that at all because I'm like, I want you to be more confident. You need to know that you're amazing. Usually women don't don't think they're amazing enough. You're amazing. But same kind of thing when we talked about the ego and fear and just kind of in the middle being passionately driven, you know, by your mission against whatever it is that you want to fight in the world to make the world, you know, the the world that you want to live in. Um, in that mindset, think about think about about your your dreams and what you want to accomplish, and then let yourself have the emotion you know, whatever that comes up, journal, journal out your thoughts, you know, write down your like, this is, this is what I want to do. And then journal out some thoughts about it. And then ask yourself what problems would come up um, if that thing happened, you know, are there, because just dial into that fear of success or that anxiety about the unknown, because we always have anxiety about it unknown. Have you ever visited like a church or an office center or a friend's house or like you've ever like visited a building that you've never been to and you're just like not sure. But then if you've been to that friend's house or that church or that uh, museum or that sports plex or whatever, there's something about having been somewhere before that you can picture it. So this is what we're going to do. You're going to picture your future and you're going to demystify it. So I want you to picture it and really put flesh and bones on this idea Put yourself in that space, that world that you're imagining, and then think about, well, then I'd have to explain this to my, if I was successful and I accomplished this and I was living this dream, I would have to explain this to my parents. I would have to refigure out this with my spouse. I would have to talk about this with my kids. I would have to learn this thing in order to keep growing, in order to be the person who could do that thing that I want to do, right? So do that mental exercise, write out all of those things. And you might do this over a period of days, but each of those thoughts, and I want you to go back and take some of those thoughts and think about how you could creatively problem solve them. And so often um, just writing things down always demystifies it. It always makes it, whenever you're scared or you're afraid and you take the time to stop and think and listen to what you're thinking and write it down and pay attention to it, It always gets smaller just by speaking it and writing it and taking it apart. And, you know, I want you to take this where this leads you. You might end up with just a list of fears that you realize are unfounded and that unlocks it for you. Maybe you need to go further and you identify a list of things that like you, like action steps that you haven't been taking that you do need to start taking to move toward this thing that you want. Maybe you're at a crossroads and you need to make a decision soon. Or maybe there's something that you know you have time for, but you haven't done it. Like list the things that would take you in that direction and put them on your calendar to do them, put them in the budget to do them. And when you do that, and you do them, (laughs) be happy about it, allow yourself to be happy about incorporating that thing into your life. And if you don't, if you keep putting it off, do some journaling about how to, 
um, I'm going to do a bonus about this like thought framework that my coach taught me because it's really good. So down there will be a bonus about the thought work, thought framework. Um, if you want more on the journaling and about how to flesh out your thoughts, go look at that and that's going to be there. Um, yeah, I think one more practical tip for this that was from that book was to manage your mental and emotional state on a daily basis to wake up. I think that was a bonus video where I talked about um, getting ready to go to do live video and preparing yourself mentally. Um, there will be some bonuses about mental thought work and managing your emotions and your thoughts. Basically, there is some work that you need to do and it all just becomes a positive spiral, a, po a good positive cycle. So as you begin to think these things and you begin to, you know, remove your fears and focus on your mission and make your mission and your compelling reason, you know, bigger, you're, you're more excited about what you're excited about and helping people than you are afraid about it. And your fear gets smaller and your faith gets bigger, right? As you do that positive cycle, this all works together. But I want to encourage you that you have permission and I want to make you aware that you need to give yourself permission. So I'm going to give you a bunch of, you know, what, what I just gave you and there'll be more bonus stuff below and there'll also be recommended reading. And I just want to encourage you as you think about managing your own thoughts and your emotions and you increase your self-awareness and you're on this whole, whole journey, I just want you to know that you need to find the place and the thing and the thought and the, whatever it is that unlocks that for you where you start to give yourself permission and you stop holding yourself back and you don't just believe that it's possible, but you've released yourself to go make it happen. I, I believe that that is a thing that has to happen for all of us and that you'll begin to feel it when it does happen. And when it does, you'll things will start to click into place. The, the Everything will start to work and speed up. And... You will feel it and it's an important step and you can't move on at a certain level until you have that, until you've given yourself permission. Um, I love doing work on this with my clients specifically. So if you're mostly doing the course, but you're doing some sessions with me or you're interested in, in that, um, if you need help with this, I love doing this. It's one of my favorite things. Um, schedule you know, ask me, ask me for a call for scheduling a call about this. If you want to dive into this, because this is one of those points where <clears throat> you can't just take in the information. You can't just listen. You really have to do that work. Like if your mission is a little fuzzy, but you've got an idea, just keep going, do stuff and you'll get clarity as you keep going. But all of this is going to grind to a halt and not really going to go where it's supposed to go. If you haven't given yourself permission to be happy, to be successful, to love your life, to be unstuck, to be moving forward, to be growing and expanding. So you, you, you're, you are amazing. I am so proud of you. Thank you for sticking with me this far. Uh, we are halfway, halfway through. You've got four of the eight steps that you need in your toolkit for being at that place where you can market your business um, effectively and joyfully and productively and just effortlessly. Like you should get to the point where marketing your business and promoting and selling, you know, yourself and what you do is like breathing air and you love it and it energizes you. It doesn't drain you. So if that all sounds like pie in the sky, like, wow, that would be amazing. Just stick with me. Just keep doing the work. And I promise you can get there because I got there and my friends have gotten there and there is absolutely no reason that you can't do it too. All you have to decide is that you are going to figure this out and that you are determined. Say to yourself, I'm going to figure this out no matter what. And then when this or that or the other, you don't feel like you're all the way there. You just keep going because you are going to get there and you deserve this. So I believe in you. Go do, do some work. Find the time to listen to yourself. Find the time to journal. 
really get in and engage. And I believe that when you engage and you do the work, that God will meet you there and will transform your heart when it is on your heart to be able to do this journey. So see you in the next video. You got this.